In this video, I'll be sharing with you my five favorite indicators that I like to use to evaluate the intrinsic value of DeFi assets. My name is Kieran and I'll be your DeFi guide. I want to give you the most relevant information as well as tools so that you can make the best possible investment decisions. If you're an Ethereum holder or a DeFi investor, then you need to watch this video until the end. The decentralized finance space is growing at a phenomenal rate with projects popping up left and right. In 2020 alone, the DeFi space has had a over 10x growth. And I'm sure you want to also reap some of these benefits. However, with all of these new projects, it's very difficult to evaluate them since there's no real standardized approach. It's really easy for any trader or long-term investor to use these indicators to make smarter investment decisions. The first indicator is TVL, also known as a total value locked. And TVL is basically just the aggregation of all of the value that is locked up in a decentralized finance space, which means this value is locked up in a smart contracts. In other words, TVL is the liquidity provided to liquidity pools, either of a decentralized exchange or a liquidity provider. If you take Uniswap, for example, liquidity pools are extremely useful because without these liquidity pools, people would not be able to swap ESC20 tokens for other ESC20 tokens. So people, if they want to earn some passive income, they can actually lock up um, two tokens into liquidity pools and earn some revenue based on the trading fees. In my opinion, a TVL is a useful metric that allows you as an investor to gain a lot more insight about how much liquidity is stored on DeFi applications and thus how much interest from the community exists towards that specific DeFi app. You can find all the information about the total value locked of different decentralized finance applications on DeFiPulse.com. The second indicator is the price to sales ratio. The price to sales ratio is basically a calculation that you can do to compare the price of a stock compared to the revenues of a company. Now the decentralized finance space, many dApps are actually already earning quite a lot of revenue. And what you can do is you can compare the total market cap of a certain decentralized finance application and divide it by the amount of revenue that the DeFi app is bringing. This ratio can help you figure out if a certain DeFi asset is overvalued or undervalued. Now you have to take into consideration with the DeFi applications that many uh, platforms, especially yield farming platforms, will generate revenue in the sense of they've got their own token which does not actually have any intrinsic value. The price of sales ratio you can actually check out at tokenterminal.com, which is a fantastic tool. Indicator number three, the amount of unique addresses. Now, while this metric does have its own limitations, the increasing number of unique addresses holding a certain uh, token can actually show or indicate that this token is gaining a lot more usage. Now, this metric can actually be gamified, like certain uh, project holders could maybe create thousands of unique addresses holding a token, so you shouldn't weight this indicator too high, but I think it's still a good metric. You can find out the amount of token holders by going onto Etherscan, typing in the DeFi application or cryptocurrency project name in the search bar, and then you see under holders the amount of addresses. However, some cryptocurrency users might have several addresses, so it doesn't mean the amount of people that are holding this token, but the amount of unique addresses that hold this token. Indicator number four is the non-speculative usage aspect of a certain DeFi asset. In my opinion, understanding what kind of use cases a DeFi asset actually brings to the community is super critical in figuring out what the true value is and not what the speculative value is. Now, if you just wanna make a quick buck, many assets often go 5x, 10x, which are without actually having a use case behind it. In my opinion, an asset just being a governance token is not a very good use case. Indicator number five is the total amount of coins in a certain project, whether the project is inflationary or deflationary. Now, in my opinion, looking at the supply of circulating coins is not enough to estimate what the market cap of a project is. I think it's very important to look at the fully diluted market cap of the projects that you want to invest in. And to calculate the fully diluted market cap, you have to take the total amount of coins and multiply it by the current price of a token. For some decentralized 
finance applications as well as other cryptocurrencies, the amount of coins that exist vastly surpasses the amount of coins that are currently in the circulating. And in my opinion, that's a pretty big hazard because if you look at the fully diluted market cap of certain projects, it's often a multiple of the current market cap. And in my opinion, that means that the project is massively overvalued. Last but not least, the cryptocurrency space, especially decentralized finance space, is completely irrational, unpredictable. It's got extremely high volatility. Only invest as much as you're willing to lose. And with that said, even with the best research that cannot protect you from a rug pull. Are you pulling up the carpet? Mm -hmm. Why are you letting him do this? I don't know. We'll punish him. All right, all right. Bart, go to your room. So always keep that in mind when investing in day old project. With that said, I'll catch you in the next video. Leave a like if you like this type of content. Have a good one. Bye-bye.